Welcome back. <laughs> Part 2 of this ad hoc stream. I'm enjoying this flight. How is everyone? Thanks for joining. Yeah, in the previous episode, we did the, f the leg from Carlisle to Walney Island where we're currently at. And now, we are going from here to Manchester. And looks like there are some nice sights in front of us. Lancaster Castle, Blackpool Tower, interesting stuff. We'll have to go through those manually. We're still flying the Piper Arrow from Just Flight. Very nice. Still, This is still not the final release build, not the public version yet, but maybe when this recording comes out in YouTube, the plane itself is released. We'll see. You guys let me know in the comments. First, let me log into Bush Talk Radio so we'll have a chance of getting those audio tours. Let's see how that works. There we go, connected. Good. Right, now we have to say hello again. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so there are some people joining me from chat. Let's set the flaps for takeoff. Trim in the middle. How are the winds like? Maybe we can depart from this air. Yeah, the, the winds aren't really basically calm winds we have, so I can depart from here. Let's continue on. Bush talk is free, yes. Bush talk radio is free. Alright, hope I got everything correctly. If not, we'll know. It's pushing it. Air speeds alive, keeping center line, 65 knots. There we go. Beautiful. Tap the brakes. Here. You can see multiple episodes at once. Yeah, the next episode just played. <laughs> exactly. I don't like the boost pump, sorry, I'll turn it off immediately. I don't like that humming sound even if it is realistic. Okay, so how, where do we go? That's a big question. If we want to go to Lancaster Castle, probably need to go and head on. Okay, we'll be flying uh, uh, through water. Should be fine, I think, because I don't want to hug the coast all over. It will take too long. Let's see if we can plan this. Get back to chat in a bit, guys. So here we are. Lancaster is there. We can just cross through here. And then follow the M6 again. Turn right to Blackpool. That might actually work. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's keep this heading. Around... Uh, 100 on the heading, something like that. Okay. Let's try climbing higher this time. See how much this plane has in terms of performance. Oh, that's beautiful. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Goodness. Okay. Get some more power here. That's the peak. Let's remain a bit rich of peak. I think I can go steeper climb here. Let's see if we can climb up to, I don't know, 5,500. Hey Deso, thanks for flying with me. How are you? Time to install free mods on FS2020. Yeah, there are lots of uh, articles about that. But basically, when you download something, you place it in your community folder. And that's that. Th there is not even a load order, like in Truxim. You just place it in the community folder and it's done. 
steep in the climb here 80 knots probably would be a good climb good Let's see if we're going to track some VORs this time there is a VOR in Wharton no oh, it's a it's a it's a Takan I think that's military but let's see if we can tr track it. 113 decimal 2. Is it? Yeah, it doesn't work though. Don't think that's going to be detected the same way. Okay, that's fine. Let's continue climbing through here. Enjoy the view. Oh, yeah, that's a very different view now, huh? Climbing our way through. Beautiful. From a Top Gear episode, I think it has a tower. I think that's what I remember from it, if anything. Hey, Railfan. Sorry for the delayed response. How are you? Scrap mechanic videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those were the days. I was thinking of it before, but by this time, the audience in the channel has completely changed. The last time I tried to ask the guys if anyone is interested in Scrap, scrap Mechanic, there was no one who said yes anymore. And if there are, probably very few. So yeah, I think that's completely changed. So probably not very fitting in the channel anymore, unfortunately. I think we'll have to descend here because we'll be hitting some clouds. We can cruise somewhere along this point. Get the RPM at a comfortable sound. 2200 for a cruise. It's not screaming at us. I do love the variation though. You really feel when the revs are high or low. really hear it. I think we stick at 3,500 would be nice. Yeah, this is a bit too close to clouds in my view and this plane doesn't have anti-ice or anything except for the pitot heat. So if our windshield starts icing, might be in for a troublesome flight then. So nice though, flying higher like this. It gives you a different feeling compared to flying at a thousand feet. Hey Swag! Yes, it does. It does have a basic tutorial. It probably will not be enough to get you acquainted with everything, but it will be enough to get you started. And from there, you can Google your way through for depending on what exactly you are looking to fly. But yes, there is a tutorial series in the beginning where you can learn the basics of flight. But for me personally, I learned the most watching those YouTube videos. I learned so much from them. I'm still learning a lot from them. So I highly recommend getting into the tutorial here and then getting more in those uh, videos online. more like it 3,500 yeah truck in flight fans by now yeah true so not much on the survival games anymore wanted you to sign up for a free trial Tom really bush talk radio you need to register but it's not a free trial last time I checked. Let me see. Let me see if we can get something there. One second. Okay. Actually, very different heading now. Should be 100, but fine, we'll adjust later. So we can hug the M6 faster. So, Bush Talk Radio. We are right here. It should be detecting where we are. 
how much harder is it to roleplay this? Um, hmm. In what way do you mean? Lower that bit. There you go. Okay, Lancaster Castle. I hope there is a landmark there. Blackpool Tower definitely is in there. But Lancaster Castle might not be. That's fine. We'll make it work. And this looks so different now from when we got here the first time. So nice. Okay, hug the M6. Just looking at my map here on the other monitor. There we go. Looks like I am tracking something. 113 decimal 2. At least the DME part, 24.8 optical miles. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll see. We will see how that works. Hmm. Leave the latchy. It's nice to see people flying around this area as well. Doesn't feel so empty, does it? Difference between playing ETS2 and auto transmission and manual. Ah, yeah, that's the goal. That's actually what I'm doing now. Everything is manual. We haven't turned on autopilot a single time since we started the flight. The autopilot on this plane is very primitive, so we're doing everything on our own here. Yes, so we are role-playing very much so in that regard. Good. Right, Lancaster, where are you? So if we hug the M6, once we have visual on the M6, we can hug it southbound. And uh, it should be to the west of the M6, which means if we're facing south, it should be to our right. Okay, I'll take note of that. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, that's Lancaster Castle right there. I hope that's in-game, but we will see. It's not in Bush Talk Radio, I don't think so. Same here, Railfan. Same here. The visuals on this sim. Truly next gen. It's the main thing that has kept me here. Because in the beginning, it was a bit of a bumpy ride for flights in 2020. The visuals were all there, definitely. But the simulation aspect was a bit lacking in the beginning. Thankfully, mods were compatible even from the beginning, so the community. The modding community quickly stepped up and filled in the gaps as much as they can. But even so, there are some... Uh, the, the simulation aspect is lacking. But that has been improving bit by bit throughout the months. And next week, we should be getting the Sim Update 3. The long-awaited Sim Update 3. Which supposedly fixes the autopilot woes autopilot G1000 woes that we have been complaining about since the beginning so hopefully we get some much needed attention on the simulation aspect then but I completely understand why they focused on the world building commercially it makes the most sense because if they implement the simulation they make it as hardcore as possible, that's great, especially for simmers. But what does that change from other simulators that are currently available already? Explain. Uh, FSX or uh, P3D. Those have nice simulation elements already, right? So, what would set it apart? Nothing much. So it decided to focus on something that hasn't been focused so much before. 
and given their resources, they could do it. And that's what they did. They focused on the world building. And now you can honestly say no other sim comes close when it comes to world building. And from there, they have the foundation. They have the audience captured, you could say. And now they can build the missing pieces, the simulation. It's a very smart move in my opinion. Not a popular move, especially not for simmers. But it's a very smart move overall. It keeps the business alive and overall I think it's, it's for the fans. It will hurt in the beginning, but it's going to make sense eventually. Okay, let's start descending here because we need to... Lancaster is right in front of us. I think the castle should be pretty close by. Yeah, Lancaster is this one right in front. And M6 is that one, that motorway there. It's pretty far away from where we can't even see anything. But yeah, Lancaster Castle I don't think will even be visible here. Anyway, let's make that descend a bit steeper. Lose altitude a bit faster. We can afford it. It did take me a while to learn everything. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Ah, I see what you're asking now. Okay, okay, yes. Definitely. Um, this is the steepest learning curve I've had to learn so far. And I'm still learning. I've been flight simming for maybe two years. And from flight simming point of view, that's a very small number. Many people have been flight simming for, I don't know, 10 years. Ever since the first flight sim ever popped up. That's why we have a lot of like retirees who are very much into flight sim. They've been in here even from the beginning. So me, in comparison, I'm a baby in the flight sim world. Don't know many of the planes. But, and I've had to learn recently. But yeah, it took me like a few months to get the basics. And until now, I'm still learning getting exposed to more aviation stuff more kinds of planes more kinds of rules more, more kinds of procedures it's a it's a long-term commitment i would say so yeah lancaster castle didn't really make an appearance unless we can spot it from here i do see yeah this is lancaster this is the city itself but i don't see a castle anywhere nor a poi so it might not be implemented in the sim. At least not by default. That looks gorgeous though, doesn't it? My goodness, let's take a photo of that. Games that don't allow modding. Well, yeah. Allowing modding is a completely separate, uh, how do you say, decision. One which has to be taken into account from the early stages of development I can imagine because supporting a modding infrastructure takes a lot so it has to be put in there even from the beginning can't just be patched on later on I would hope that all games support modding because I'm very much yeah, leaning towards being able to mod stuff tweak things but I can understand some people, some developers don't want that because it uh, detracts from their vision. Like they have this specific vision on how exactly they want the game to work and that's their work, that's their creation. And they don't want anyone from changing that. So like I perfectly understand that point of view as well. In, in some cases I can imagine that makes a lot of sense. But... Of course, I'm a modder at heart. So I would very much appreciate if modding is supported. With these sims though, modding is a must. With the simulation, the simulator, not allowing mods is like a, a death sentence for a simulator in my opinion. With games like RPGs or uh, first person shooters, Maybe it's not as essential because modding can easily lead to like cheating, tweaking the values and everything like that. But with simulators, I think 
you should have mods in there because mo simulation can be it's ironic but I think simulators can be a very subjective thing case in point all the discussions we've been having with graphics sounds and whatnot in truck sim and if you don't allow all those options people will look elsewhere and you can allow those options in a way based by allowing modding I was going to say simply allowing modding but that's never a simple thing is it as I mentioned the entire infrastructure has to revolve around compatibility and uh, working with mods the entire time very long time ago Microsoft made a game called Microsoft Train Simulator a train sim as detailed as this oh yeah we've been having discussions along those lines as well but for truck sim and uh, yeah that's the hope but this one the, everything that we're seeing right now developed by satellite imagery developed by AI it's a really next-gen kind of thing but going up close and personal really on the road you know instead of a thousand feet two thousand feet up in the air that I think is a different equation altogether the level of detail you would need when you're right on the road right next to a house right next to a railing a sign a road marking and for the AI to be able to develop that I think that's even more next gen isn't it but who knows hopefully that will happen in the future modeling in the world without needing to handcraft it the entire way that would be so cool <clears> hey <throat> eggpants let me know when you have questions with the mods if you're looking for something specific let me know maybe i can help all right so we're tracking the m6 here there should be a huge junction coming up soon where we would branch off we would take the right exit and we should be on the m55 which goes directly to blackpool where the blackpool tower is that one we should see in the sim and we should hear some audio on it so we'll see 2001 goodness yeah yeah i think it's a different technology altogether to make it work for truck sims and train sims the detail that would require something completely different yeah i'm wondering how microsoft will pull through here i mean they've established this whole world created some handcrafted but most ai generated what else are they planning i mean i'm sure there are more applications than quote-unquote just flight sim it's only the beginning wow yeah the possibilities of implementing this elsewhere using this for something else would be amazing wouldn't it <laughs> thankfully not control shift that actually got auto modded the LOD for this game is super impressive yeah you hardly notice the the difference although in some areas it is more apparent like the mountains popping up not really popping up but like changing its form when you look closely at it like there are some parts of the mountain that like pop in and out some minor imperfections but nothing to break immersion so much Ooh, what is that right below us I thought it was a castle or something maybe a school could be man this looks so lovely
in the base on this engine, huh? Giving me goosebumps. ASMRish vibes. Yeah, the weather is something that else that they've aside from the world, the weather is a huge achievement as well. There are still lots of things that need to be done there from an aviation point of view, like the effect of weather on the planes, how the air works with the planes and how it feels when you pass through clouds, things like that. So those parts are still, I think, in progress. But the clouds, how they are generated, how they look, how they merge with the world, I think that is a masterpiece already. So much potential, definitely. Yeah, the future is bright for this one. And uh, the main complaint for this sim at the moment is the lack of simulation elements. That it focuses too much on world building. The world is great, but the planes are crappy. Well, this plane starting to prove that point. Did I have flaps all throughout? Oh my goodness. <laughs> no one saw that, guys. No one saw that. No wonder we were flying so slow. Now, I purposely did that so we would have a much more scenic flight. Yes. Let's uh, say it's that way. Okay, so jun the junction should be right here, but I'm missing it. Oh, there it is. There's the junction. So we'll fly over it and we'll exit on the right. That's the M55, I think. Yeah, that's the one exactly. I love it. How accurate that is to the real world. Because I have little nav map open in my other screen, and little nav map has a Google Maps overlay. So I'm practically looking at Google Maps, overlaying where my plane is, and it's one is to one, exactly where the intersection should be. Absolutely amazing. Let's make that turn. Beautiful. So nice, yeah, look at that. That's the motorway we're looking for. <clears throat> M55. With all its roundabouts and stuff. I wonder if I've driven through here in the in ETS2. I wonder if this is available in Pro Mods. Actually, can't remember. <clears throat> now, the thing about Just Flight, from what I learned, is they are a publisher. So, they actually have planes from different developers. In the level, the quality of those planes can vary a lot. This one in particular, Spiper Arrow by Just Flight, this was internally developed by them. And so far it's looking great, especially for Flight Sim 2020, I think it's one of the best ones we have right now. <clears throat> so it really is stepping towards the right direction in there. Maybe not yet a study level as some of the planes that we've grown accustomed to in other sims. Like I mentioned a while ago, some sims have like even the simulation of how the mixture really affects the engine and how you can like drown it or starve it or flood it that part i don't think is here yet but maybe eventually we will see ah, this is great pretty much directly above the railway line ah west coast main line i see the link from London to Glasgow through Birmingham. Of course you would know that, huh? Nice. <laughs> Thanks for the info. Maybe, did you spot the the railroad tracks from below a while ago? Point it to me if you spot them, okay? Thanks for the info, rail fan. Flying with flaps on is like flying with the handbrake on. It even looks like it. Maybe with the handbrake slightly lifted. So it's like flying, it's like driving with a, a, a little brakes put in. 
Normally you would have flaps when you're taking off and you're landing, but not when you're in the middle of cruise. So, <laughs> yeah, driving with the parking brake on, I guess that highlights the the immensity of that blunder. Blackpool Tower should be up ahead. I think that's the one right in front of us. You guys see? It's like something jutting out there in front of us. I believe that's it. I saw them a while ago when I was in a camera outside. Ah, I see, I see. Well, I think we'll be going back. So if we look at the map here, yeah, we're headed straight into Blackpool Tower. I would imagine that's the one. And then we'll get back on the road here. And then we'll be heading to uh, Manchester. I think that's Manchester. Cool stuff. Have a good night, Bao Bao. My pleasure, man. Glad you were able to join us. And uh, even though it's ad hoc and everything, thanks for staying up late. Appreciate the company, man. Stay safe and catch you in Discord. So here we should have some nice visuals from all visuals and also audio tours care of push talk radio soon enough we'll see there it is blackpool tower five miles away i like that how i like how you can see it from afar like it just it just doesn't just pop up the last minute So the draw distance is not a problem in this case. Very nice. It's a very good point, huh? The draw distance. You can see the mountains even from far away like that. So depending on the visibility of the weather, if you have weather that has limited, uh, unlimited visibility, then you see, really, how far the eye can see. stuff let's descend a little here get a little bit closer to the action maybe descend to around uh, 500 feet or so so we can get a nice view goodness rail fan yeah have a good night man thanks for staying thanks for joining and uh, thanks for the insights on the trains i'll get a closer look try to notice more the train lines that's something that's missing in the sim, that's a good point. We don't have actual trains yet in the traffic, I think. We have cars, trucks, but not no trains on the tracks yet. That's something that I hope they develop more. Blackpool Tower. Okay, I know nothing about this place. I know nothing about this landmark. But soon, hopefully, it triggers. We get a bit of a tour. Care of Bush Talk Radio. Come on, give me something please soon let's enjoy Blackpool itself first wow very dense here huh very different from the other towns and cities you've passed through it's like a very busy city the tower is on top of a famous ballroom Ooh. Good morning, adventure. Thanks for joining the stream. Glad you made it. How are you? Still enjoying the UK tour here. Still in the first part though. The second part of the UK tour has come out already. And I'm still in the first part. More than halfway there though, I think. Um, why is that not playing? Come on. Blackpool Tower is a tourist attraction in Blackpool, Lancashire, England, which was opened to the public on the 14th of May 1894. When it opened, Blackpool Tower was the tallest man-made structure in the British Empire. Inspired by the Eiffel Tower in Paris, it is 518 feet tall and is the 125th tallest freestanding tower in the world. 
Blackpool Tower is also the common name for the tower buildings, an entertainment complex in a red brick three-story block that comprises the tower, tower circus, the tower ballroom, and roof gardens, which was designated a grade I listed building in 1973. The tower celebrated its 125th anniversary in May 2019. Nice quick trip here. Now let's take a photo of it. This is also something great that you can do in the sim. Take photos whenever you want. With a few caveats. Would be nicer if we could tilt more, huh? Maybe we could tilt the camera in the meantime. Just for a bit more drama, a bit more flair. That works for me. Good. Thank you. Alright, let's continue. Oh good, great to hear adventure. What have you been busy with these days? Have you been flying as well? Okay, off you go. Back the same way we came from. Get that full first. Climb here. So nice. Hey, thanks for joining. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for follow. Appreciate it. Let's go and look for M55 again. Get back on track here. Because we are making our way towards Manchester. M55 I think is somewhat one of those roads. <laughs> I think it's this one. Yeah, the one that's branching out, going out of uh, Blackpool here. If you can track it, that's the one all throughout. Should be. How are we doing on fuel? Uh, around one fourth, I think. Fuel tanks, these ones. Yeah, we started half tanks on each side. We're a quarter now. Mm, I guess that should be good enough. We'll see. Okay. Started your first Twitch streaming. Oh, nice. Congrats. Enjoy the ride. It's an amazing journey. Go. Alina Peak. Flaps fully retracted now. Didn't forget it this time. There's also a massive theme park in Blackpool. Ah, tallest roller coaster in the country. Oh, too bad they didn't model that in. So I guess we should have seen it here. I bet we should be visible from up here, right? If it's that, if it's that humongous. Or maybe it's outside the actual city center. Hmm, let's see, maybe Sky Park has it. I haven't seen it though. Yeah, there's only one landmark here. And in Bush Talk Radio... Yeah, there is no landmark about that either. Oh, that's a shame. It'd be nice. Maybe we can add it later on. Oh, farming same hype. Huge field here. Lovely. So where are we going again? I think it was Echo Golf Bar Bravo Charlie or Echo Golf Charlie Bravo. One of those. Echo Golf Charlie Bravo, yes. A little bit, a bit to the northwest of Manchester. But looks like we can follow the M6 again and then the M61. Something along those lines. Yeah, so we'll be going back to the same junction that we came from and then we'll be turning right. Actually, I can cut it through here. There's a river. Quite fond of those, of following the highways though. 
maybe because I'm very fond of driving I get to enjoy it too even while I'm flying I'm still following the roads but it's nice I like I like snaking through the roads in the same way just a thousand feet higher over 250 meters high meters or feet nice yeah then we should definitely be seeing that Wharton there's an airport to our right I think that's the one I think I see the tower there that's actually the the VOR or the Takan that we're tracking here so 3.4 nautical miles so that should technically go higher yes it is getting higher the distance is growing as we go away from that airport there nice everything is working so far before trucking you used to enjoy flying ah, now what do you like more enjoying the roads as much as flying one of the great sceneries of all time that's true that's true the development of roads is a huge feat in our uh, civilization Or in the town center ah yeah or it also might not be in the same otherwise we should have seen a landmark for it i would imagine but we'll see maybe we can revisit that sometime beautiful views all over anyone familiar with preston that's coming right up ahead these all these buildings see in front I really don't know how they do it but they manage to creep up an entire city in front of you and you don't even notice it just like real life like you just travel like this and when you next look in front of you there's something completely different from what you've seen initially like there's a whole city in front of us now and it's just been slowly but surely creeping up and i think that's testament to how well the distance the draw distance has been done because nothing pops out at you that's when you notice the changes right like for example the limitations in truck sim when when the mountain suddenly appears in front of you out of nowhere you notice it Oh, or the building appears. Oh, but here, didn't even notice that, oh, we're actually approaching a city. The city of Preston. It looks like there are some very nice buildings here, so let's fly over and enjoy. A hey, Mac. Yeah, the Granada one just released yesterday. This one, no clear, no official release date yet, but from what I heard in the rumors, they say Just Flight mentioned that it will be either late this week, which is pretty much ending, or early next week. So very, very close, supposedly. Thanks, Control Shift. Appreciate the follow. Thanks for hanging out. no unique buildings in here but my goodness just the buildings that have been automatically generated they look so real to me as a person who's never been here i don't notice any like thing anything popping out out of the ordinary or out of the way it should be is that a cathedral wow that's something new yeah, I think they are constantly improving the AI. Because I remember before they didn't have that. They couldn't make churches. The churches, the cathedrals, they all appear as like normal houses or buildings. But now it looks like they can distinguish which one is which. And they can create custom models for those. So cool. Nice. And that's the thing. 
they are continuing to update the world here all in the server all in the server side so we don't even notice them so much cool. sure thing mac are you planning to purchase both or are you waiting for a just light or maybe carinado i've been reading through the discussions in the forums about them carinado versus just light versions they're very different from what i've seen and for, aimed for very different audiences as well people who like a simpler experience who want a cheaper plane has all the basics in there the carinado one seems to be a nice purchase but for those who are looking for a more immersive feel more systems more simulation at a heftier price looks like the just flight will be the thing for them so two planes with the same name but with very different target audiences and also very different generations from what i've heard because the arrow from carinado is from the 2000s i think this one from just flight is from the 1970s so very different interior even though the exterior does look a bit similar from a layman's point of view and yes i would consider myself a layman <laughs> okay one second huh? i think this is the m61 getting all kinds of junctions right now i'm getting confused i'm looking at the map so let me show you what i'm looking at that's what i'm looking at so we're tracking m55 we turned we explored a bit of preston and now we are on the m6 making our way to m61 follow my mouse southbound like so all the way to echo golf charlie bravo barton here in manchester this near manchester so we'll see if that kind of navigation works for us that's the one m61 for sure oh that looks so lovely let me take a photo of this i love that the classic interior dials plus everything you can see outside just looks so good you're leaning towards the just flight you like the older version yeah i think it's the same for me especially because the interior from the carinado is quite for me yeah, um, from a layman's point of view it's quite similar to how the mooney looks from the inside and i already have the mooney so i want something that is completely different looking and this one definitely looks so different for those who are not familiar, I'm not sure if it's been publicized, but as I was reading through the manual of this one, they actually have a cleaner look of the interior. If you're not a fan of the wear and tear, although I think most of the people are, if you like the 70s look but you like it in mint condition, they actually have an option. They have a, a different texture set that you can use so that you get the 70s feel but everything is brand new no nicks no dents and whatnot no dirt and it's all a matter of like copying over some files to the to, from one directory to the other they highlight it in the manual so that's cool it's pretty pretty uh, accommodating of them see i can imagine not everyone will like the wear and tear it's nice for immersion but some people like it clean some people are very sensitive to like dirty stuff and when you're simulating things might as well make everything perfect so i can definitely get the point of view from those who like it perfect <laughs> one of the only streamers bronze almost everyone's usernames right i hardly doubt that <laughs> in terms of me pronouncing names right i have had a lot of misses Hey wheels up sorry for the delayed reply we've from vancouver canada oh nice so i imagine you were watching the pro mods canada videos man i miss pro mods canada i wish 140 would go public already so that pro mods can get to updating their map i would love to drive through there again i particularly like the oh how do you call it tch1 uh, the highway one <laughs> can't remember how you call it but the, the the number one highway 
love driving through that and seeing all the mountains in the side. Station building is massive. Preston is a major stop of crap. I read that too late, sorry. Did you guys see it? I hope you guys at least saw it and recognized it. Sorry for the delayed response, guys. Too busy monologuing. I'll get back to your chat. To chat soon enough. Greater Manchester, which is like a county. Ah, thanks, real fan. Glad to have a local here. It's more familiar about things. AOB. It is the Just Light Piper Arrow. Not yet publicly released, but soon enough. In a matter of days, hopefully. That should be the same plane that is referenced in the title of the stream if you want the more accurate uh, name. Also in the mods list, I think. I think in the mods list, the model number is there. Just Flight PA28R Arrow 3. I think that is in full. Trans Canada Highway, that's the one. Yes, TCH. Okay, I got it. I always keep thinking of Transcontinental Highway though when I think of TCH. Trans Canada. Trans Canada. Okay. Otherwise known as just Highway 1. Okay, that's much easier. <laughs> highway 1 it is then. Saves me a lot of trouble. Thanks. Alright, real fan, have a good night. Thanks for all the insights. Appreciate it. Catch you next time, man. And if you're in the mood, feel free to join Discord. Exclamation point Discord gets you there. That's where I announce when I am streaming like this. Ad hoc. Or when I share some stuff. Sometimes I even stream over in Discord for more informal streams. Thanks. Everyone is welcome to join there. Except the trolls, of course. And the bots. And the... <laughs> you get the point. Lovely. Yeah, great stuff. The local commentary. It always helps a ton when you have a local as a tour guide. Oh, that's a train line, I think. Am I getting it? That one, right? That looks like a train line to me. That's one for you, real fan. Oh, that looks so nice. Steady bending road. Feels so real. Not to mention the engine sounds that we're hearing, especially from the outside. I'm more of a fan of the engine sound from the outside rather than here in the inside. But I think that's the one that's being tweaked. Although to be fair, I know nothing about how a real Piper Arrow should sound like, but I'm just basing it on my own preference, on my taste. If I like the sound of it, not really referring to anything that is if it sounds like a real thing. Roundabouts galore. Welcome to the UK. <clears throat> Beautiful stuff. But yeah, all throughout this entire time that I've been streaming, how long have I been streaming? Almost two hours now we'll, we'll, we were, we've been hand flying this thing. I haven't turned on the autopilot even once and it's not a chore at all. Staying level is so easy with this plane. The, the handling is so different from most of the things I've flown. Even the Mooney which I really like. The Mooney is a bit on the sensitive side when it comes to flight controls. I, have a f I, I feel like it's a bit too sensitive and I have to tone down the, the sensitivity on the yoke. But this one just feels so nice. Hey G. The doors are openable, yes. There are two latches here. How are you doing G? Thanks for joining the stream man. So I remove this latch, remove this latch and push it off and the door will open. Also this one can open. I won't though, but yeah, you, you unlock it and then you open the window. The thing that isn't working yet, and I hope it does in the full version or in a future version, is I hope that when you open the windows or the doors, the engine sound changes. I guess it should, right? You should hear more from the outside. So like, I think 
in some planes you have that in the Mooney for example you have that effect I like that effect very much Osh gosh oh I heard so much about it I've watched so many videos about it and yes it would be a real pleasure to be in there in real life someday maybe when all this is over huh oh my goodness I'm looking at the airport it looks like it has grass runways which should be fine we're not really a, a big jet or anything we should be able to manage Barton the largest runway is 2,000 feet long <laughs> not very lengthy 08 or 26 I think we'll be taking the 08 based on the winds in this vicinity the local QNH Moon is a sports car here in a Cadillac right now ah, that's a good point yeah so maybe they are working as they should the Mooney is designed for something a bit more sensitive. It's a good point. Great to hear, G. What have you been doing recently? Have you been trucking or flying? It's like a more industrial zone here. Still following the highway getting pretty dense in this area but the frame rate is still absolutely stable love it so the plan is as we approach a junction uh, let me see let me see the road would be bending to the right curving to the right there would be a junction, like a triangle shaped junction. I think that might be the one. Let's look from the outside. Yeah, I think that's that one. But we should be hugging the right side here. Turning to the right this way. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. And then as we follow this through, the airport should be right in front of us. So we'll fly over it. And we'll see how the airport looks from above and then we'll do our approach uh, 086 on the heading for the runway 086 that would be a nice one we can I think probably hmm, we might actually be able to go straight into it One second, something is wrong with this one. Oh yeah, this is not aligned anymore. Goodness, this is old school. This is what they call this again when it can get misaligned. Oh my goodness, yes. One second, let's correct this. I actually didn't notice it. When it's based on a different mechanism behind the scenes, it can get misaligned with the magnetic compass. I think when it's based on gyros, is it? Uh, don't don't quote me on that. I'm I'm very bad at this. So here we are. Uh, so we, when we follow this compass, that's the 180 heading. Okay, that's close enough, I think. Yes, good. So this, I think we're in the outskirts of Manchester, Trafford Park, on our left. Might be an industrial park though. That's the one. We should be flying over the airport now that's the one. Oh my goodness yes that looks pretty interesting so we go straight through the runway at the end where there's a taxiway and then we join the rest of them there okay good looks good start slowing down here blender as usual creating or trying to oh that's super cool man what are you trying to work on modding stuff my bad, my bad. Okay, first notch of flaps going down. Barton Airfield, you recognize? Oh, nice. Have you been here before? This area? So cool. Always great when we have locals for touring out. I love how the sound changes as we deploy their flaps. Hear more of those sounds passing through the plane 
I cannot see. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's the one. Good. Landing gear. Full prop, full mixture. Landing lights. Fuel pump. Let's turn base here. We get some more power in. Extending a truck chassis, oh my goodness, that's hardcore stuff. Good luck, man. Must be an enjoyable venture. Canada, yes. World update for Canada, that will be amazing, huh? Is that the airfield? 08 right. I think so. Flaps. I hope that's the one. Full flaps. Sure looks like it. There it is. Zero eight right. Some markings on the ground. That's all we get. Winds are coming from the left just a tad. 72 at 5 knots. That's fine. Almost headwind. That should help with the braking. The landing roll. Yeah, you can see the wind south as well is reflecting that so we have proper headwinds here. We chose the right runway at least. Good, 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 good. There you go. Very nice. There they are. So let's taxi to the end of this runway. There should be a taxiway coming up at the end. Turn off that boost bump. The landing lights, I guess, can go off. Where the heck? Well, maybe taxiway might be stretching it a bit. Or is that that one? Yeah, I think that's the other one. Why is it that the taxiway is cement but the actual runway is grass? <laughs> maybe it's a work in progress. Hey, Nico, thanks for subbing, man. Thanks for your resub. Appreciate it. Glad you could join. How have you been? And why is the wind all in a different direction here? The wind sock. Strange. Laps going up. Love the squeaking. We can open the, the windows now. Yeah, you see the, the sounds are still the same. But I am in a preview build. This is not the final version yet. So I hope they can put that in. It's last minute. It's my that's my personal wish. Um where the heck would we squeeze in through here? Well we can refuel. I hope we don't hit any of these guys though. Okay, we'll be clearing that one. Here it's going to be a tight squeeze. There you go. And we can stop here. Is that this one, I guess. That works. Awesome. Nice. Let's go turn off the avionics. Each one of them. That's how we do it. Also this one. There you go. Did I not actually set my transponder? No one saw that. Okay. Pito heat can go off actually. And we can... the mixture very nice and now we can open the door ah there we are good ah there we go 
Nice. 1 hour 41. I'll take that. Flight time. Adding more to the flight hours in my log. Thank you guys for keeping me company. Appreciate the, the ad hoc attendance. <laughs> Thanks for joining. When I learn to land like that, <laughs> sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you guys for joining. We'll end it here for now. But yes, catch you soon. And if you're interested, catch you in Discord. Exclamation point Discord gets you there. That's how we flew in. So the, these are the breadcrumbs for today. Started off in Carlisle. Followed the motorway. I love reviewing the breadcrumbs after. And then we landed in here in Walney. Hugged the coast. Joined the motorway again. Branched off. That's where we looped around the junction. Toured Blackpool Tower. Made a U-turn. Enjoyed a bit of Preston. Joined back the motorway. And uh, crossed over near Manchester here. Barton passed through it. Made a right downwind. Right pace. Joined final. Landed and parked through over here. All good. Love it. So, yes. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Clumsy flying, everybody. Catch you soon. And bye-bye.